And we're talking to you here from beautiful Maple Bay on Vancouver Island. Bill's wife and I was a school teacher for my working years, and now I'm happily retired. My name is Bill Abram. Uh, uh, I'm a retired school teacher too. I believe we began watching almost when they began to show up here on the island in late 1998. And 1999, we became more aware of it because we saw articles about them in Ontario, in Espanola. The town of Espanola in Ontario had sued the government because they were having excessive drift down of aluminum and rainwater had been tested and uh, it was far above levels of safety. So once we read that and knew that it was a real thing and we weren't just seeing contrails from normal airplanes, we began to watch very carefully. So that was after 99. Contrails are very commonly left behind a normal aircraft that's flying when the exhaust meets a uh, cold air, very cold air. It has to be hmm, 70 degrees below or something very cold and it condenses and you see it come out as a long line as the airplane flies and normally they disappear within a few minutes. At the most they've ever been measured to last about 20 minutes when conditions are very stable but mostly they just disappear. The chemtrail, what we call chemtrails, is not the regular exhaust. It'll form and it doesn't have to be into such cold air at all. At much lower levels, not so cold. And it sprays out and it hangs there in the air. It doesn't disappear in a few minutes. It can spread out, get wider and wider, and it can last for hours. Back in the early 50s, 1951, I uh, signed up as a meteorological observer for the Department of Transport. I was stationed at North Bay, Ontario. As a weather observer, I had to uh, identify every cloud in the sky and transmit uh, the observations uh, hourly to the weather service. And so, consequently, I certainly got to recognize what was a genuine cloud and what wasn't. At that time, I, of course, I had nothing to compare it with, so I just knew what mare's tails were and uh, the elevations of the clouds. I had to identify them. But as I see the chemtrails here, they do not match what I was taught was cirrus or mare's tails or uh, alto stratus in a very thin layer. It just does not match with uh, my observations in the early 50s working as a weather observer. I think it was um, 2001 when we really became more seriously interested. Will Thomas, who has the Lifeboat News website, began investigating it very thoroughly, and he lived right near us in Duncan. So we got in touch with him to see what he knew about things. He had studied the Espinola lawsuit against the government, and I had asked him, what do you know about uh, biological agents being in this spray? Because they had discovered the aluminum and I think barium at that time, and also some quartz, like quartz, all particulate that damages your respiratory system. At that time, he said that he didn't have knowledge of there being biological agents like bacteria and uh, fungus and things of that nature. But we kept in touch then, and as Bill said, we went through investigating about the people who were having definite health problems and putting it down to fallout from the sky. When we were investigating the Cryptococcus neoformans, and as Celia said, uh, people developed nosebleeds, I did develop a brief nosebleed too at that time. I was trying to capture some of the uh, uh, fallout and I spread a black tarp out on the lawn. After a day of it being out there, there was a filmy, talcum, very slippery surface all over the black tarp, which, uh, you know, was not normal <laughs> for the tarp. 
In the years uh, succeeding, the um, chemtrails seemed to get uh, sometimes much thicker, and uh, would you could uh, see uh, uh, fallout from the chemtrail. It would drift out, and uh, trails would be hanging down as if uh, it were dust falling from the sky. To begin with, all the trails were long and they were crisscrossing like a checkerboard. But then two years ago, we'd start to see a big puff of white and then all the fallout, the strands and the powder drifting down, sailing out over the sky. And the plane would go along and be another big puff. They were starting to puff it out. The other interesting thing with the long ones is that makes you realize they're not contrails following an airplane. They're going along and they're very solid and then just stop. They're just cut off. Either the tanker ran out of spray or for some reason, or you'll see it come along and then take a U-turn and head back, which no commercial aircraft, which is what the authorities tell us. It's just a commercial aircraft. There is one characteristic that uh, we first noticed, uh, and as a weather observer, I used to see sun dogs, but never in the summertime. Yet, all through the summer, in 2001, 2002, uh, we would see uh, a complete ring around the sun, and uh, on the two edges, the, the sun dogs. But they weren't of the brilliance of rainbow colors that we would see during the winter months under natural conditions. I wouldn't say that the uh, chemtrails have actually increased. There are some days when it's a beautiful blue sky day and no sign of anything. And uh, you wonder, well, why aren't they doing it today? What's the purpose of covering the sky with this stuff? We have a photograph that was taken on September the 12th, 2001, of the tracks across the sky at a time when no commercial airlines were allowed to be in the air. That was just after 9-11. And uh, uh, this uh, neighbor of ours took a photograph of it, which w it was published in the newspapers. And it's very obvious that it, it's a chemtrail. They're a definite thing, and they have nothing to do with a regular airline contrail. We have had people phone, though, our local uh, uh, airports and uh, the weathermen there who confirmed, yes, oh, well, what is it? It's a, it's a joint operation with the American um, Air Force or some part of their defense system, and it's called Sky Obscuration. It's an effort to cover the sky. So I wrote about that to our Minister of Environment at the time, and he wrote back absolutely denying that there was any operation in connection with the U.S. departments and that sky obscuration, absolutely not. We could never get anywhere with our government officials. They denied it completely. Official response mainly can be summed up as denial. They send me wonderful page letters of explanation on what a contrail is. And I write back and say, I don't really need an explanation about contrails. I want you to find out, get busy, and find out what's in this chemical spray that's being spread out. But that's it from the Minister of Environment, the Minister of Defense, from the Center for Disease Control. Don't want to admit that there's anything going on. You can't help but wonder why so few people notice it to begin with. Sometimes when it's a very heavy day of it and we're in town, we'll say to somebody in the parking lot, look up, do you see what's up there? They never noticed it, hadn't a clue what it is, and really aren't all that alarmed when we tell them. And uh, until we get the word spread widely, we won't have enough reaction to it. But uh, we do put things in the paper, and I send out other information saying, call the government, call the environment department, tell them we don't want our skies covered with this. We have never been asked for permission to allow our blue skies to be covered. Never asked us.